Hi, my name is Janelle Riley. Thank you so much for joining us today for this Q&A with Everyone's Obsession, Servant. At this time, please join me in welcoming the creatives who brought this Apple TV Plus unnerving, exciting series to life. I want to start with executive producer and director, M. Night Shyamalan. And we also have Hello. actors. Hi. We have actors, Lauren Ambrose, Nell Tiger Free, Rupert Grint. Hi. And Toby Kebbell. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for the nightmares. Um, I actually want to start at the beginning <laughs> with Night. You've, you've worked in television before, but you're obviously best known for your wildly successful work in film. How did Servant come to you and, and what attracted you to not only doing this, but doing it in the medium of television? It was just luck. Uh, you know, I've been approached to do TV uh, pretty consistently over the years and this particular pilot came with this with this idea at the center of it of uh, this family with this tragedy and this woman who ha has forgotten uh, or is not dealing with what happened and I just found it very very moving and I wanted to know what happened when she wakes up and that's such a beautiful engine um, for 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 the show and the parameters of the show the idea that it was set in a house and it was like a play um, and that was half hour thrillers. I thought that was really a, a beautiful format that you could make razor sharp. You don't have to have any fillers. You could just be razor sharp about every episode. And that made it feel doable that we could do it at a high level and put our efforts into the, the craft, the, the, the cinematography, the performances, the costumes, the lighting, all of those things that I care so much about. We could do that because we weren't running all over the place and trying to do an hour's worth of material and and filling and filling that it really felt um, that we could do these moments that, that talk about this family's journey and trying to avoid uh, mourning. I don't know if there is a 20 second elevator pitch for Servant. It's so complex <laughs> and nuanced, but how much did you know of the story going in? Like when I tell people, you know, to watch it, I'm always like, you know, and at the beginning of episode one, the baby comes to life. Did, did you know much <laughs> beyond that? <laughs> Always knew that there was going to, that Dorothy was going to find a baby after um, taking care of this doll. And, and then everyone was, she just won't blink and that, that's her child and never, never think twice about it. So that was always the story um, and the mystery of this young lady. The fun part about working in this format is you can create and learn. So there's a balancing act between enjoying that part of it, of going, oh, who is Leanne and where does this, where is this family going to end up? You, you enjoy that like a writer sitting down to figure out the story and, and learn it as the characters unfold. But you need the discipline of being able to hit hit a mark. So that's what's tricky about the television format is using both assets uh, as best you can. And uh, I think by the time we got through, I think th four scripts or five scripts in the first season, we had a sense of uh, a real strong sense of where Leanne's past was, which was the, the most important thing to figure out. And for the cast, how did you become aware of the project? I, I don't know if you were able to read the script when you started and what attracted you to your roles? And let's start with Lauren. I read the script and and talked to Knight and worked with him on it and talked to him about the character and got the job and uh, really felt just very excited to do this part that seemed so hard and, and or just mysterious and um, was like, how how on earth will I do this? This woman who's sort of uh, not aware of this incredible trauma, and you know, and so it seemed like a field for creativity. And of course, Knight was at the helm, and he's uh, that seemed like a pretty pretty good thing. <laughs> and, uh, he's so good at what he does, and yeah, just never been in a thriller before, and really excited really? to play this character and uh, and learn and learn about the genre from Knight. So. Toby, what about for you? What interested you in the role of Sean? I mean, all, all of the things that, that Lauren said, and, and in addition, I, you know, I read this role and I was like, uh, sometimes you read a character and you know exactly who they are supposed to be. You know exactly, you know, what you can bring to them, you know, how you can bring them to life. And it was one of those roles that every time I read it, I was more and more engaged, more and more excited. And I, I got to read just the, the 10 pages I had to do for the audition. And I was off doing another job and I was trying to film on an iPhone and my iPad and trying to 
you know, record the other lines and do all the things. So it was just that sometimes a role really grabs you. So you only got to read the first 10 pages for the audition. What happened when you read the actual pilot script? You know, I was gobsmacked. I sort of didn't quite, it cleared up so much for me. I was thinking, what has this been about? And then once I got into it, you know, I was reading the scripts ravenously. I was just going through and I, I was so lucky we had 10. You know, we had nine or they held one from us. I was like, do I die? Is that why they're holding 10? You know? So, um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was brilliant to read. So it's, it's, it's one of those, sometimes you don't enjoy reading a script. You're like, okay, I'm doing this. And you're trying to break it down technically. This is just a great read, you know, so brilliant fun. Rupert, what about for you? I, I think Julian would actually be really fun to play. <laughs> yeah, he's so much fun. He's just got this very kind of specific language that, like Toby says, I instantly kind of tuned into him and just kind of knew who he was, even though I'm very different to, uh, to Julian. I can't relate to a lot of his... <laughs> antics but i just I just knew instantly kind of knew who he was and how he thinks and he's just got some great lines as well and i love the the kind of humor um into it and but yeah it's just been it's been great i mean i like toby i only got originally got one scene it was these two guys arguing about a doll and i had no kind of context so it was it was very kind of confusing but knowing night was involved i knew not always as it seems and it's yeah it's just been hugely fun now, what about for you? Leanne is is still two seasons in, a bit of a mystery. Um, what did you think when you read the script and what were your initial impressions of her? Um, sorry, I've got the giggles a little bit. Uh, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I actually got the first episode um, and I read it. I was like, oh, I was on another job at the time and I read it in my like trailer and just like read it all the way through and was like, holy shit, if I don't get this part, oh, sorry, <laughs> holy, holy balls, if I don't get this part, then... <laughs> No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, if I don't get this part, then I'm still going to watch this show because I really need to know what happens to this girl. Um, and yeah, Knight being at the helm of it, and it, there was just so many things about it that were so like enticing, and and the opportunity to play this kind of character that is the big question mark of the show. And um, you know, believe it or not, I do try my hardest to retain some air of mystery. Um, so it was really exciting and. Yeah, I mean, I, I read the script and Knight asked to see me. I did a self tape and then I met him and then I had it. And it was, it was, uh, it all happened kind of quickly and, and was pretty amazing. And I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you, preparing for your roles and also Knight for developing the show, what kind of research did you have to take on? I mean, like, I, I would be a little worried about your browser histories because you're probably looking up Colts <laughs> and Reborn dolls. But Toby, you also look like you can really cook. Did you Did you know anything about that? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, my mother is a is a cook. She was a professional cook, and you know I had to peel her carrots, and onions, and chop them into small cubes. So I was, you know, my mother's slave in a way. Uh, I worked for free, and uh, I mean I got to live in the house, so of course, you know. Um, and nice yeah, skills. I did, and I, Came in with exactly. knife skills. Yeah, came came with knife skills. But then, you know, Knight arranged uh, me working in, you know, Mark Vetri's restaurant, uh, Vetri Cucina. So I got to work with those guys, and that's where I met Drew, who is our chef now, and uh, the guy on set, Drew Tomo. So, you know, I got to work with Philly chefs, and it's that incredible mix of people. So there was a lot of attitude that I, that I stole from those guys in the kitchen. I was going to say borrowed, but I'm not giving it back. So I, <laughs> I stole it from them uh, and added that to Sean, which was a nice element that I that I was definitely missing from my character. So, you know, being here in Philly and filming in Philly and playing, you know, it, it really helps to, to have absorbed some of that uh, life. Knight, what about for you? Did you have to, I, I just sort of assume you know everything about everything weird, but did you <laughs> have to look into cults or any, learn, learn anything new for this? Well, it's an area. Of, well, cults are something that I'm, I am interested in. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm fulfilling the stereotype. But um, I, 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 I'm very interested in police, people's belief systems and and what makes people believe that good thing that happened to them was you know God wanted it for them or didn't want that for them. Or um, I'm, I, I find that really even in historical terms, I, I find that really interesting. But the, the ideas of cults and and Manson and all of those things, I um, Jim Jones and all of that, I love them and really want to understand when a belief system takes hold that strongly, uh, 
you know, what happens to us as human beings, our individuality, all of that stuff. So all of these are areas of great interest to me. Um, and the family being the center of the story is always where I feel strongest when I, you know, we're in a genre and, and I put the family at the center. Uh, I can relate. I start, I, I'm very em- empathetic to the, each of the characters. I was just thinking as you guys were talking uh, of how lucky we are, the five of us, because I got to direct them just just finished directing the four of them in in the first episode of season three, and I genuinely had this feeling going, "Wow, you know, we have found the four individuals and 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 at the right time in their lives, and and these parts are are so connected to them, and maybe in some ways are parts of them that they don't they don't even know, you know, uh, about, but they're getting to explore them, but they're so they're so tied, and actually who they're becoming over these years." Is it like a, it's like a mix. Like they're each becoming a little Dorothy and a little Sean and a little Julian and a little Leanne. It's like, it's, I, I, and you're, you guys, I'm, I'm having just directed the four of you, you know, you are, you're better than the first day that I directed you better than on day one. You, you, it's in your bones. It's just, it's just coming off of you. It's a very special thing. I'm kind of, it's like four virtuosos now uh, directing you guys it's uh it's really beautiful really beautiful i feel very lucky and obviously that's different than in 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 movies because you don't i don't have that time over years to work with 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 actors um and sometimes it happens you know like you'll get a a haley or a james mcavoy or something and it just it just explodes right then in those in that time period that you're there but to see this kind of evolve like this, it's just really, it's a beautiful aspect of the form of telling long form stories that as, as the creator and the guy, you know, directing you guys, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Very, very lucky. Anyway, I don't want to get wow. sentimental, but I love these guys. That was, that was the point. <laughs> I thought you were like, it, <laughs> <laughs> it is such a great cast and, and the chemistry feels so immediate between everyone. And Lauren, I'm, I'm curious about, in addition to preparing for this role, um, I'm so glad someone had the good sense to cast you and Rupert as siblings. That is genius. (laughs) Um, Was that chemistry pretty instantaneous right off the bat? Hey, you know, that's for others to decide. I, I, (laughs) I like, I really like Rupert as a person, but if you say that it's a good fit of a brother and sister, then I believe you. (laughs) I do love, I do love when we get to, do those scenes they're mm. they're very sweet and I, I i don't know i can't think of a lot of uh brothers and sisters and and things and you know and their show can be so uh strange and dark and exploring all of these sad things and and um and and then rupert's storyline too with dorothy and then rupert's storyline is gets so dark sometimes but but when they're together there's this sort of um you know maybe uh, underlying trauma, but really underlying sweetness of, of the brother sister relationship. And I, I really love doing those scenes. So I don't know, that's something I'm grateful for. And something that's, you know, we've seen, like Knight said, we've seen evolve. It's so interesting working on a, on a long form. It's funny. You can't really call it a TV show. Cause that's definitely not what this is here. It's unique and special to the format. Um, and see how the, the writer is, you know, find things and pull things out from performances or what they get. And then, you know, it's, it, it's really a company. The continuity is really inspiring to, to see everyone's artistry evolve. So. And in preparing to play Dorothy, in addition to, you know, just preparing to play the role, how did you sort of emotionally prepare for, for really the emotional marathon that she has to take on, you know, the way she's grappling with her grief? Gosh, you know, I, I was, I was doing a, a Broadway play at the t- show, a musical at the time, and I came right in to do this show, and so I, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to really, you know, prepare and think. And we, we jumped in, we rehearsed, we talked about the characters. You know, I had these beautiful actors to work with, our work and our connection, and deepen the emotionality, and and yeah, working with other artists is really, I think, the the, the answer. You know, I was just thinking as you asked that question. When we did, I think it was the pilot, and we were doing a scene with you and Leanne and the doll, <clears throat> and mm. you got very emotional. You had to step away, and I was like, "Are you okay?" And and you went, you were like, "It's just so sad for her. I just feel so yeah. sad for her." You said that to me, and you were, you know, like, and the way you said it, it was so, so much empathy for her that you know that, and that's how I love to approach actors, and you guys do it, which is you know, protect her, protect him, and. 
We're not talking about Toby or Rupert or Yunel. We're not talking about them. We're talking about those guys that we all have to protect. And that when you said that, when you were like, it's, I feel so sad for her. Um, mm. That's That was like, I knew we were all doing the right thing in the right way. Yeah, it's a tragic story at times. And, and um, you know, the Buddhists say one loss is all loss. And I feel like that's something that we're exploring on this show this idea of grief and these people who just can't bear to look at it and, and, and you know maybe that's what we're all doing um but yeah but it's also really fun to figure out how for me to figure out as an actor how to you know the different masks that dorothy wears and she's fairly theatrical so that's been fun to to figure out and do and um yeah i don't know <laughs> Now, what about for you, because Leanne is so mysterious, how do you go about preparing to play a character who, you know, we learn more and more about each week? And, and how much did you know about her going in? Are you allowed to ask, uh, you know, for future spoilers? I mean, I don't really know if it's about asking for spoilers. I think it was more just asking, like, what the general kind of blanket idea is for this character. And, I mean, I've said it, but Knight... Um, kind of gave me this one thought and this one idea right at the beginning when we what, do you remember when you took me on that tour like around the stages when we first met and, and you pulled me aside and let me know where I should bring everything from and as long as I sort of like retained that one perspective and that one reality then um that's like the color that should always be kind of underneath the end and so you know it's trying to kind of find that balance and that duality to her that you know is she this like ethereal being or is she just a teenage girl or is she someone with serious mental issues or is she someone just trying to figure stuff out it's like you know there are all these different questions around her and it's just it's 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 trying to retain her mystery but also make her somewhat likable and relatable because you don't want her, I don't think we want her to just be the run of the mill kind of antagonist. I think sometimes you have to be able to root for her. And um, yeah, so it's just kind of finding all those colors and Knight's been pretty amazing in helping me find them and bouncing off of these three. And um, just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't have to tell us what the answer was but have you ever you know gone to night or, or one of the producers and said like so am i alive or dead or you know <laughs> what's my oh, story yeah. of course <laughs> like rap parties or if we're out for a meal and you've had like a glass of wine you're like just tell me go on just tell me no one's ever broken <laughs> So no they one's, no one's ever broken. No one's ever broken. I still don't know what the end goal of Leanne is. I still don't know any of that stuff. And uh, But that's great. I mean, it's like figuring out as we go along. And I mean, they have everything worked out. It's us kind of learning as, as you guys learn. And um keeps it interesting, you know? Sure. Well, the truth is Leanne might not know what she is. Exactly. So it, exactly. Yeah, makes sense. I feel like I'm shouting. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert, what about for you? You mentioned that Julian is very different from you, but um, I think there are some things in common. He he's often the comic relief. Um, he's 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 you know got that very smart mouth. Um, how do you sort of uh, prepare for this role? I don't know if I really did prepare per se. I mean, the accent is probably the only thing I really kind of prepared. <laughs> uh, um, but I think I really relied just on the, the great writing. It was such a great kind of rhythm to his kind of speech and it was something I could instantly kind of tune into. And obviously the guidance of, of Knight being there all the time was really, he just felt so safe. And and also the way we kind of film, like chronologically in this very kind of contained space, kind of bridging the gap between theatre and, and movies, it, it just felt very comfortable and, um, yeah, quite thrilling to, to play a scene in that environment and uh yeah just it was just so much fun what about um we really saw the effects of julian's drug addiction in season two did you have to do anything special to prepare for that um yeah again uh <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um but yeah like no i mean voodoo, you know actors do voodoo they do. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't talk about it. It's hard to talk about <laughs> witchcraft that we're up to. Yeah, but it's interesting kind of how that has kind of built from the season one. It, Julian is someone who kind of relies on all of his vices. He's this kind of very hedonistic 
person. He's, and he's using it all to deflect what he really should be doing, and that's to grieve. And, um, yeah, I love all those kind of layers. He even uses it with his humour and his sarcasm. It's another kind of way to kind of distract himself from what he should be doing. And, um, yeah, as many things he can use in that way, I think, is his thing. We just did a... Uh a scene uh, f- that I just directed him and, and, and Lauren and where they're singing and just to, to just to see, just to, t- I, I can't convey to you how uh, amazing they are as actors. Cause I've been out with Rupert when he tried to sing <laughs> at a, at a karaoke thing and just froze, just froze in front yeah, of everybody. True. The camera phones are out. Nell was up there. Sorry about froze. that. And <laughs> everybody <was> froze. <laughs> Terrible. It was that one of those nights, Lauren, where we were just like, shoot, Lauren went to bed, let's go out. No, it was, no, you weren't there. It was a totally separate day. We were in London. <laughs> yeah. Still, it was, and still just to it see time. these, the, to I see you guys, the time. I, to see you guys transform the way you do and the way Julian uh, comes to life with you. I mean, he, you know, he started singing like, like that's what Julian does, right? <laughs> with his sister. And it's just a beautiful thing to see the four of you. Uh, really, really embrace your your characters that way. And also, this is a small thing about now. You know, I've, um, the idea of directing younger actors uh, as they go from instinctual to craft and 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 is a very tricky moment for for them as individuals. And because of, of Nell's age, you're you're right between instinct and craft. And so we're watching that transformation happening right in front of us over the years. That's the the kind of the fun of it is seeing her develop and become a, a, a very strong woman right in front of our eyes over the seasons. That was something we, we set out to, to find that person that we would love to see grow up right in front of us, right in, in, in these, in, over the series. And so all the rest of us watching her uh, become this beautiful, beautiful actress and in control of her craft. It's, it's just, just really great to see. I suspect I may know the answer to this question just from from having you all here, but you're obviously dealing with some heavy subject matter, but are you able to keep the mood and the atmosphere on set fairly light? Are you able to, you know, joke around and have those moments of levity? Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all like yeah. each other. It's pretty great. We do. We oh. do like each other. Yeah, it's been pretty great. Well, I mean, when you have everybody's, this intense everybody's subject funny. matter. Yeah. yeah, you gotta let out the steam. So there's lots of yeah. there's lots of yucks. You're catching us right now. We're all in our dressing rooms. We're here in a bubble shooting season three. That's why we all have the same sofas because we're each in our our individual dressing rooms and we're and we're, 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 we're working. Toby doesn't we're have a sofa. <laughs> Toby, where's your they sofa? Took mine. They took mine. They were like, he has to sit by himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Toby. Toby. Except for Toby. <laughs> Well, actually, while we're on the subject of humor, a lot of people have pointed out that season two has some really, really funny moments. I've I've found the show darkly funny all along, but I think there are some laugh out loud moments. Um, Lauren's line when you're you're yelling at you know Uncle George, "Don't you dare pray for us," <laughs> is yes. a favorite of mine. Uh, Knight, was that a conscious decision to sort of inject more humor into the season and? and how do you balance those tones? Yeah, I, I think second season, we we kind of did more of everything, went into genre more, went into uh, the thriller more, went into the horror more, went into the humor more, the stakes are higher. Uh, these, again, these four, they're very good at, 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 at being able to convey struggle and pathos through through the humor. And they're very, they're very strong physical actors, um, you know, like, even I remember Toby in the in the pilot when when you I asked you to kind of lean in and look over at at Leanne when she's putting the doll in the crib and talking to her she keeps talking to the doll when she's alone like it's alive and you kind of leaned over you know and I was like oh he's got he's he can do he can do all this humor um, this is cool and 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 Julian I mean Rupert so funny physically and obviously Lauren it's just this idea of that I have four actors that can do humor anytime we ask and make that small little house feel bigger than it is because they're so physically gifted. Um, it's definitely part of when I go walk out, you know, anybody comments on the show, they comment on the humor of it. You must all be good at keeping secrets um, or maybe they're just not telling you everything. Um, but I'm curious, have any of you read any of the fan theories or the speculation online? Do you, do you sort of get a kick out of that? 
I stay far away from the internet I don't, yeah. when it comes to my work. God knows. <laughs> but, um, but I hear that there's wild do, theories Rupert, out there. do you there. go on there? I haven't looked, no. But that's so, that's so healthy of you guys. That's so wonderful. Yeah. Don't yeah, look, no. Knight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I get I, I The only time, I never look either, but there's Stephen King, who's been such a fan of our show, had yes. tweeted something recently, again, about how this is like the his favorite show and all bingeable uh -huh. and all of this stuff. And I clicked on it and then I, you know, I, I looked at a couple comments. I just, you know, looked at a couple, <laughs> just a couple underneath. And the, like the third <laughs> comment was, I love it, but there's no way... Knight knows where this is going. He's clearly just making this up as he's going along. And I'm like, I do know where this is going. <laughs> that was, I was like, See, this is why you don't read this stuff. I was like, I do know where this is going. Stay away. All right. Put an end to that rumor right now by telling us all where it's going and, and how it ends. Okay, <laughs> don't, so you don't you dare. Don't you dare. No. No. <laughs> No, I, I can't wait to find out. Now, you have provided us with so many scares over the years, but they're, they're very thoughtful because they're rooted in these very specific fears. Um, it really makes me wonder, uh, what scares you? You know, I was a very fearful child in general, which is probably still in me that, you know, being able to conjure <laughs> that when I'm writing or thinking of stories and um, very human, you know, uh, you know, for me, the, you know, the, the shadow or the sound in the house or uh, is very frightening. You know, I always give the kind of example of, I don't need blood dripping from the walls. That's not scary. But if a guy is in a scene and the, he notices the picture of his wife is face down and he's like, that's strange and puts it up and then goes and gets some coffee, comes back and the picture's face down again. That's scary. You know, uh, it's related to some, you know, you get this weird feeling that's much scarier than the blood on the walls kind of thing. And so, um, those kind of human human things of the unknown. I have to just trigger the unknown in us, and that's fear. You know what? The house is supposed to be empty. What what is that sound? Um, why is she talking to that doll? Uh, all those things are very eerie, and you know. Okay, but I do want to say that that blood on the walls is scary too. Just technically, <laughs> <laughs> not my thing. Not my thing. Yeah, I was like, does that happen a lot? Because it's too unfazed by it. <laughs> I made it a show, not in my actual house. If I saw blood in the wall in my house, that would be scary. <laughs> what about for the rest of you? Would you, would you consider yourselves fan of this genre? Which and it's I shouldn't say this genre because it's a thriller, it's a dark comedy, it's horror, it's almost a kitchen sink drama in some places. Um, you know, do you enjoy playing roles like this? Do you know what's amazing about this story is that the fear of losing your mind, you know, I, I, one of the most heartbreaking things to me, and actually I find this really heartbreaking, you know, it's scary as well, but the heartbreaking element is I watch things about, you know, some woman who's getting Alzheimer's, you know, my aunt's getting Alzheimer's and that fear of losing your mind and going, wait, because I very rarely second guess myself, but making that decision. And I find myself doing that in my life as I, as I grow older, that's what I do. I make my decision that thing that that's slipping away and that you're not right and this isn't the case and you've got this all wrong and you're the, that's terrifying to me and it's in sixth sense that's what's scary to me about sixth sense is that he is in here and he's doing this good thing he's helping this kid and he's it's not real it's not it's just brilliant what a different twist on everything but well, that for me is terrifying that kind of losing your grasp on reality is it's terrifying so absolutely I, I'd never worked in this genre before or whatever this is, but, um, you know, that night is so good at. And what's striking to me in it is that, you know, we do our work as the actors on this one very human level and we make it as real as we can in, in the on the day and in the moment. And then there's so much going on. It's actually, it's, it's incredible to go and watch the show once it's put together because there's everybody's department is so valuable in creating the tone and the texture from the composition to the set deck and the costumes and the layers of texture and the, the lighting, obviously, and the camera angle. And so, so much, it's all been so carefully curated. And, um, and so, so that part of the, this, this genre is uh, pretty great to learn as we go along here and, 
and work within because um, you really feel like you're part of a, a, a much bigger thing. One, one, we're one layer of a many, many multifaceted thing. So that's been a, an education for me. Becoming a dad, having a baby now, has kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things about the show. It's kind of, it feels very real. It's made things a little bit more, you, you kind of do, do you feel that kind of, that tragedy is, is really kind of quite palpable. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of changed things a lot for me. Oh, I bet. Nell, for you, I don't have kids, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> but you got working, dad gags. <laughs> <laughs> I've got dad jokes though. But um, yeah, no, this this genre, this is my favorite genre to watch, like thrillers and mysteries and all that stuff. Like that's my favorite thing to like sit and watch. So to be in it and to sometimes be the scary thing in the kind of scary show it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun even though you know my character like retains a lot of like stillness and she can be stoic and quietly creepy as opposed to like in your face like Bleh. but um i yeah it is a lot of fun playing that and it's fun being able to do a scary thing with the comedy element as well and with that levity like because like it's fun to do it in one place with the same three people all the time because it's like you're constantly just creating new stuff together and um yeah it's, it's a lot of fun there's a lot of fun doing this it's gonna be weird when we don't do it anymore. <laughs> i also want to say that it's also really it's pretty amazing that through that i've learned that through the genre we can we can explore these huge ideas these big ideas what is grief what is loss what is it to allow someone into your life to take care of your child uh, you know what is a marriage um um how you know how what's it like to be a parent or a new parent the sort of innate fear and vulnerability that comes from that so but to explore those ideas through the genre you know maybe in another way it might be melodrama but this is this gets very specific and it's um very very cool it's fun to hear you guys talk about it because we i guess we haven't talked about it as much about what the what the genre means in terms of its limitations or opportunities but i guess one of the things that inspired me in the beginning was, hey, when I was a kid, the genre that I'm interested in was a B genre, essentially. It was, oh, that's in those days, straight to video. Now, back in those days, you just, that means that you would never have a theatrical release. You go get a, you go get a VHS and you go to the, you go to the, straight to video. That's what that meant now. It wasn't meant for God, for I thought that was just a myth. <laughs> 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 And, but my heroes and some of the ones that are on my walls over there and there, you know, uh, Spielberg and Hitchcock and Robert Wise and The Haunting and um, Kubrick, they all have done this genre. And they didn't choose to do it by reducing the craft. They chose to do it at the highest, highest level of performance and cinema and everything you can imagine. And so it doesn't mean, you know, the, the fact that we're, we're intending to create a thrill in you doesn't mean we have any less standards than any at the highest form of storytelling in terms of what I'm asking of them or the costumer or the cinematographer or the writers or the production designer. Um, and and we, if we approach it that way, you get this fusion that's really beautiful. You get this thing that we, we get to entertain people without sacrificing any of the complexity of the art form. Absolutely. And that's why it's probably my favorite uh, genre. And I don't want to um, keep you guys any longer because I need you back on set because I need season three. Like, <laughs> that's really, really true, soon. by the way. <laughs> but I do want to <laughs> remind everyone watching at home that uh, season two, actually both seasons, are currently available on Apple TV+. Plus. You can watch them all again and again and come up with lots of great theories that um, Knight will read on the internet. Thank you so, so <laughs> much for being here today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate you.